Welcome to the first texturing tutorial. And I've kind of put this one off for a couple different reasons. First of all, something like entities is much more complex and much more involved than, you know, texturing your levels. You can kind of figure out how to texture things, uh, obviously by reading the manual and just kind of fiddling around with the texture tools. So I kind of put it off and, you know, procrastinated doing this. But even if you think you know everything, go ahead and watch this tutorial because there's a lot of tips and tricks and things that you'll catch and uh, just shortcuts and things and, and also some best practices that'll help you and save some time for you. So our map comes up and we want to go to the face inspector and down at the bottom we hit texture collections and we're going to hit plus at the bottom to add a wad. And then this allows you to select the path type. I always use absolute and what happens is this, it defaults to it and what this does is writes to your map file. So this is the directory that your wads have to be in when you're compiling your map. Now to select a face, you use shift and left click per face. You can also hold down shift and control left click to select more than one face. So I'm gonna go over the user interface of the face inspector here. Uh, let's shift and left click a face here. And what that does is that brings up the texture in a tiled fashion so you can see the edges into the UV editor here. To navigate the UV editor, you just use scroll wheel to zoom in and out, or you right click and drag to pan your view. These grid lines here that highlight when I mouse over them are referred to as the texture grid. We're gonna get to that in a minute. You left click to move the texture around on the face. This red line signifies the X axis and this yellow line is the Y axis. And you can see that they're updating down below. So this yellow circle here in the middle is referred to as the scaling origin. And as you can see, these red lines intersect the origin. You can just click on each red line for accuracy or you can just click and drag this guy. Now it's gonna snap to the vertices for you so it's a little easier and you can it'll snap to the center of the of the face of the brush now this outer circle is for rotation so when you mouse over and it's highlighted you can rotate the texture by just left clicking and dragging now the scaling origin kind of acts as an anchor so let's say i needed to adjust just one side of this face here i could grab this grid line and if you notice the left side of the screen or the texture is not changing, only the right side. So that becomes kind of an anchor point. And I apologize for the flashes on the screen. That's just how uh, it is on Windows. Uh, it must be a driver thing, I'm not sure. So now if I grab the same thing and make the same move, it's sticking to the center. And I can adjust things like so. Now that's, the same thing works for rotation. If I rotate this, this is gonna, you know, be the center of, of the rotation. Now down below the UV editor are some buttons here. The first one is reset texture. So let's say I'm goof it up and I just want to reset that. Boom, that's easy. Uh, the other one is flip texture on the X axis, which is not really going to do a whole lot. It, you can see it moved a little bit. Um, also same with Y, so that makes it upside down. You can rotate by 90 degrees counterclockwise and clockwise. Now the grid X and Y text boxes here will give you the ability to make a smaller texture grid, making things a little easier to deal with. So below these buttons in the grid, you have the texture information here. You just have the selected texture kind of presented and the size, and that's pretty handy to have. So not only can you click and drag here to make adjustments, you can do, you know, real specific adjustments in these text boxes. So I just entered that. Another way that you can uh, modify this is just to use the scroll wheel. You can see the eye bar there is in that text field. I'm scrolling. Just using scroll is adjusting by the grid size. You can also just click in there and use the arrow up and down keys to make adjustments. And there are modifiers to change how the increments go. So let me show you that. I'm going to go down to a grid size of four. And I'll just use the arrow keys up and you, you'll see it's going by four, right? If I hold down shift, it's gonna go double the amount of the grid, so it's gonna go eight. 
another modifier is control. So if I hold down control and I'm using the arrow keys here, it's gonna go one quake unit at a time or one pixel, I think, at a time. It gives you very fine control and that, get, that goes for the mouse wheel as well. So I'm holding down control and I'm just using the mouse wheel, shift as well. You can do the same thing in the scale text boxes. You can also do it in the angle text box, which is actually rotation. Now, if you don't want to mess with these text boxes, you can use just keyboard shortcuts in the 3D window. So this is selected. I'm going to use the arrow keys up and down and left and right to make adjustments. Again, the default is the grid size. That's how much your texture will move. If I hold down shift, it will be double that. And if I hold down control, it's just one unit at a time. You can also rotate with uh, keyboard shortcuts page up and page down. So I'm hitting page up and it's spinning around. And the default for that is 15 degrees. 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. If I hold down shift, it's gonna do 90 degrees at a time. And that's actually really handy. If you hold down control, it's one degree at a time. I've made a 32 by 32 brush here and I wanna scale down this texture. So I'm gonna hit shift and left click. Now in order to do the scale, you can just type this in manually, 0.5 and 0.5. I'm gonna select this face and instead of typing it in, I'm going to hold down shift and do mouse wheel until it's 50%. And there it is, that's fixed as well. And of course, if I hold down control, it's gonna go you know, in very small increments. So now we'll go down to the texture browser. And as you can see, uh, I've got a couple wads loaded up and down at the bottom, just like the entity inspector, you have ways of filtering and searching for textures. So the first, um, you can organize them by name or by usage. So the most commonly used will be up here. Now these are yellow because they're actually used in the map. If I scroll down here, we see other textures that don't have a highlight. And that means they're not in the map. Now you can click on group and what that'll do is I have two wads loaded down here. I have texture toot and I have skips. And when you group them, it will organize them by that wad or texture collection. Down here where it says search, we can filter for texture name. So I've just typed in wood and those are all the textures that begin with wood. This red outline signifies that this is the currently selected texture. When you first start a map, you have to kind of select a texture. And once you make a brush, then that brush is textured with the default texture. So I'll go to a smaller grid size and I'll kind of drag out a, a brush here. And you can see that the textures are aligned to the world on the grid. So you have to adjust things uh, if you're working off of that grid. So I'm off the 64 grid here. Now I'm adjusting that, now I'm back on it. So the way the texture projection works is sort of like a little movie projector that's projecting the face, the texture onto the face, and it sticks to the world. You know, if texture lock is off, you're moving this around and the, the, the projection stays the same, but you're moving the screen, so to speak. You can copy and paste textures from one brush to another. So I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna highlight this brush, shift, left click, and then I'm gonna alt, left click, this brush, and that face uh, is taken from there. This texture is not on the same grid line, so if I alt-click here, it's gonna respect that grid line and keep that projection that way. So I'm gonna undo that, and the shortcut to avoid that would be Control and Alt, left-click. That just takes the texture only and not the coordinates of the texture that you've changed in order to get it to look right. You can also just traditionally copy and paste. I'm gonna shift click this to select it, control C to copy, and then I'll shift click to select this face and control V to paste. Let's say I wanna make this a wooden crate. Well, there's a really quick way to do that. I'm gonna select this face, and then I'm gonna alt double click on this brush, and that applies the texture to all the faces of the brush. Now to select multiple faces, you shift control left click, and I want to replace all these textures at once. So now that we can go and go to replace texture and this little interface comes up and on the left here is that selected texture. 
On the right, we have the entire collection of wads. I'm going to go to used. I'm actually going to type in crate here. So now we have our crate tops. I'm going to change them all at the same time by clicking this guy and replace. And it'll give you a report, you know, you've replaced uh, four faces. So what if I want to replace all this green stuff everywhere? Well, I can do that really easily with the uh, replace texture. Go here, scroll down to that texture, I'm going to select it. And then I will find, let's go to Wiz, do that. Now if I hit replace, enough, no brushes are selected, only these are selected. I'm going to hit replace, and that tells me I've got 147 faces I just uh, modified. So now we were able to do that in one operation, pretty cool. You can make changes to every face of a brush at the same time by shift and double clicking and now that selects all the faces. And this texture isn't scaled properly for this small brush so I'm going to type in 0.5 here and I'm going to type in 0.5 here and now the scaling is correct and I've done them all at the same time. So I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. So I'm going to hit R. I'm going to grab this handle here, which is the Z, and I've now done it 45 degrees. Now texture lock was on, so I'm golden here. Everything's fine. I'm going to undo that, turn off texture lock, and I'm going to rotate it now. As you know, the texture is going to stay in position. And if I try to kind of fix this by dragging it, you'll notice here that the texture is now much larger. So if you pretend this is a movie screen, if you move the movie screen 45 degrees and you had the light projecting on it, uh, it would kind of stretch the image. And that's exactly what's happening here. So the easy fix is you just kind of drag this guy and put it back into place. So I'm going to make a new brush on the grid and it's 64 by 64. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this brush in half and I'm going to select the other side and hit enter. I'm going to turn off the grid by hitting zero and you can see that the face it looks stretched and it is stretched for that same exact reason. So I'm going to select the face and I'm going to type in X scale only 0.75. So it's still off a little bit. We're just going to kind of manually do that. And now the, the rivets are proportional to the face of the brush. So for example, this wall is a 45 degree angle and uh, I adjusted it to 0.75. If I reset this to zero, it's stretched. So you need to get in the habit of doing that. Uh, it's the correct way to deal with uh, 45 degree angles. So a reminder and kind of a tip here about texture lock. When you're building your level before you kind of go through and make tweaks to it, just make sure you're building on the grid. If I'm making a crate, there's no reason not to use a, a 64 grid. I mean, because I'm just going to paint it out like so. And it's done, basically, except for the top. So stay on the grid as much as possible when you're building your geometry. And keep this off. Then when you're finished with your geometry and have it the way you want it, you turn texture lock on to make adjustments. So creating your geometry on the grid and then also texturing on the grid will help you tremendously and save a lot of time in the long run. And just remember, you want to, you know, when you're making a rotation, make sure texture locks on because it'll save you having to go back and fix things. So that's it for this first texturing tutorial. And later down the line, I'm going to do another tutorial that goes into a bit more detail about aesthetics and do's and don'ts. So we'll get to that eventually. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next tutorial.